All right, so we're sitting with This By Them, uh, the designers of the Drupal Camp LA website two years in a row, uh, and actually award winners, correct? Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, there's, there's been a couple. <laughs> For uh, Drupal Project, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves, please? I am uh, Scott Nelson. I am the, uh, I guess, development and tech half of this by them. And oh, there's more than that. You can see oh. there's some good stuff. In there. Yeah, but I can't. I can't talk about. No, me. no, you should talk about yourself. Um, oh, I guess I. Yeah, I started. I was the original creator of the services module. Oh, that's something really small. Drupal, which is relevant, <laughs> I guess. Um, which is now maintained by uh, Hey Rocker, who is awesome. Um, Drupal related, what else? Play bass. Play bass. <laughs> no. But I'm not really a bass player. I don't consider myself. And you're an LA Drupal member. I am an LA Drupal member. I said, no, why, why are you, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Your turn. Well, well, yeah, I think uh, I think we should introduce Lance here. Lance, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Lance Alton Troxel. I am the design half side fourth of uh, this by them. And uh, I live in Oregon. And um, <laughs> that's all I got. You see how hard that is? Come on. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't do a services model. I'm not as smart as you are. All right. You're all, you're all the smart stuff all the time. Make stuff pretty. I try. I make stuff work fun. Sexual. Functional. You know, La La Lance, we, we, we get a lot of compliments all year long like about your designs on the campsite. Thank you. Uh, and as soon as we published the new design of the new site, people were just like, wow, they did it again. And like, to be honest, a lot of people have kind of given it the tone that we've already outdone ourselves from last year. Oh, wow, right, cool. Yeah, Great. So. I was happy with it. It was a lot of fun to do. It's like it's, uh, you know, as most of us know, we have clients, and clients we have to please. So, um, and though, obviously, I want to make the you know, Drupal, LA Drupal team that puts all this on and does all the work happy, um, in essence, it's, it's a little bit hard work to just come up with something fun and funky and cool. And crabs, come up with crabs. Yeah, the crabs thing. Uh, so for those that don't know, the staff uh, that at Drupal the Camp staff LA, has crabs. Uh, we have crabs. Uh, <laughs> and to clarify that, uh, Lance actually designed, and if you go to DrupalCampLA.com and you scroll to the bottom of the site, uh, it, it, under all the fishes is a crab, a Drupal crab. Yeah. And a very, very cute little design. And that's actually the design that Lance chose for the staff shirts that we printed this year for uh, the campers. And uh, they've been a big, big hit. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, the, uh, the crab jokes won't cease until we uh, probably do next year's design, uh, which is fun. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess I should come up with another, another, another crustacean. Yeah, that'd be good. So another, another. Well, Drupal lobster, would that really have worked? It doesn't roll off the tongue as well. So much. Like, yeah. little shrimp, like little shrimps. Little shrimps. Oh. I'm just thinking maybe just a plankton. Yeah. <laughs> so, sponge. Yeah. Sponge. Drupal sponge. Your Drupal sea monkey. Our sea monkey. Sea monkey. Octopus that would be good. Oh, an octopus. an octopus. See? I almost did an octopus on the site and just stuck with the fishes. Really? I got tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's you got eight. You got three, three legs and... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. just three legs and it's sort of a tripus. <laughs> so, so, so let's get into some of your guys' work. Uh, let's uh, dig into some of the projects you guys are doing right now or maybe even start with uh, what has been actually uh, what you guys are initially known for in the Drupal community, please. Guide initially us. known for. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's kind of fun. Um, we were we started our company doing a lot of Flash stuff. Um, actually, Lance and I first several projects that we worked on were all Flash based. Um, I came across Drupal actually looking for a CMS to uh, to power our Flash sites. And so one of the cool things that happened as a result of that is we started figuring out. Um, ways to actually make Drupal and Flash talk together. Um, no, you started to do that. I didn't. Okay, well, I started. All right, fine. And fine. this is where the services module was born. Yeah, so the services module ended up as a result of, you know, lots of different versions of, of different things hacked together. Um, but yeah, that's where the services module came from. It was for making, it, making Drupal and Flash talk together. 
And so in the infancy of our company, when we were, you know, we would throw stuff up on the, sh the, the Drupal.org uh, forum showcase. Usually they were flash sites. And, uh, and I talk a little bit about how I made that happen. And um, so, you know, because they were pretty cool um, and it was cool to see Drupal used in that way, um, we started to get some recognition for being, you know, kind of like the Flash and Drupal company. And one of the, the coolest sites we feel we've ever done, um, at least we had the most fun on, um, was a site called droge.com. It's for a musician, uh, singer-songwriter guy, Pete, Pete Droge. Um, fully interactive Flash site, um, but managed with Drupal in the back end. And so he could go in and, you know, upload his songs and... Uh, People could com uh, post to like a message board thing, and and the flashlight didn't need any recompiling because it was pulling from the database. Right, right, right. So it's a completely dynamic flashlight, which not a whole lot of people were doing at that time either. Um, so it was it was cool to to have a fully kind of ready to go back end system to power a flashlight. Um, and a lot of people really when they kind of hook like especially even just Drupal and Flash, it's really it goes only as far as loading XML. Right. You know, Drupal I'll put an XML view, they load it up real quick and then they just kinda of do some display. But yeah. the the work you did on services module is literally based on using a technology like AMF, uh, action messaging format, which is binary uh, awesome protocol for flash flash very small and you send the data and you don't have to make it all XML it could be anything in objects and I think that's where literally things just started to tip over uh, for going to either just flash or just Drupal to flash and Drupal uh, being, being actually a combo so that makes sense totally and, and AMF and AMF PHP and those kinds of projects being sort of like the default go-to for uh, getting dynamic data into flash and that's de definitely the most performant for a larger amounts of data um, there was a definite need in Drupal to have that capability out of the box you know without somebody having to um, try and develop it every time or try and develop custom XML scripts or whatever. so that was like circa 2007 2008 2008 almost it was end, end of two, it was end of 2007 was it that yeah and two, cause 2008 was Boston yeah and at Drupal Drupal Camp, the first Drupal Camp LA in 2007 at Beverly Hills people were talking and showing off their website you know uh, the flash site at the first Drupal Camp at uh, the first Drupal okay. Camp and uh, then I remember you and I actually met in person finally at Boston in right. 2008, right. Uh, which was uh, probably about five months after uh, the first Drupal camp in LA, and um, it, there was a palpable interest and, uh, about Flash and Flex and Drupal, and totally. that's what I was doing my presentation, I know you had your presentation, and there were even a couple others around us. Um, so, you know, I definitely feel that like you kind of dominated a lot of the showcase uh, pieces of that sure. time. Uh, what are you guys actually now kind of going towards now? Because I know Flash has, you know, gotten some bruises uh, because of uh, a lot of hardcore HTML5 adopters and, uh, you know, iPhone being popular and, you know, no Flash on that platform yet has really gotten businesses to change their uh, view of using Flash immediately as, you know, their showpiece. Yeah. Um, so now what is the type of work? that you guys are really producing that you're proud of, um, even if it is with Flash? Well, it's it's kind of unfortunate because, I mean, our, we just really like making cool stuff, um, and Flash is one of those platforms from a, an artistic standpoint and a creativity standpoint. It allows you to make some pretty amazing stuff on the Internet, you know. Um, these days, unfortunately, um, not as many people are interested in, in cool. Um, well, I don't know about that. I think that's. I think they're just interested in getting information quickly. There's a lot more. That's out what I was there. trying to say. Yeah. So, so you know, it used to be like when Flash was cool, and then you'd have the Flash intro. Everybody had a Flash intro. Yeah, remember? Which is just the stupidest thing now. You can imagine, like, you go to a site, and then you have to sit through something for 20 seconds or click to get in. But it was cool then. It was the way we all built it, you know. And. Uh, <clears throat> And I think now, with the um, ubiquity of the social networks um, and how quick information, Twitter and you're texting more and all this, th th people don't have time. You know, and I think that a f flash site can still work when you're creating a, a vibe or an environment where you're inviting the user in to stick around and, and kind of forget that they're web browsing and do some another kind of presentation. But for most of the most of the sites, and rightfully so, I don't think it, I don't think it works well. Um, 
I it's think... also funky too because it never handled text right. And if you actually had a lot of text, it was just always bad. Yeah. You know, it was good for a little. It's beautiful for images or for video um, and for small bits of text and audio and stuff. But if you actually, you know, had like, more than a hundred words in a blo- in a paragraph and you had to start scrolling, it just always. There was there was cats out there that did the full screen thing, you know, where there was actually yeah. that they did it. I've seen I've seen it done well, yeah. but um, it's very rare. It's very rare. So I mean, uh, the creative part. I, what I see is that there needs to be a, uh, a level of maturity in making sure that the design and development, especially for something like Drupal, which has a whole different type of design layer and a thought process from building literally HTML pages and throwing you know a file up per page. Uh, you know everything has changed now. In your guys' process, because especially Lance, you're in Oregon, and Scott, you're based down here in Southern California, you guys have a company together and you guys work very well together. What is the magic of that design and development process and workflow and if you can let people in uh, on basically your tools of choice as well uh, I think some people will get interested in that so well uh, I think it's mostly honestly on Scott's side because he's an unbelievable developer and really smart and then on top of that he's got a, he's got a great eye and uh, you know, stereotypes aside or stereotypes reinforced most developers hardcore developers aren't people that tend to be really um, aesthetically motivated let's call it and uh, uh, and Scott can see that so um, and I think that um, I also when I met Scott we started working together um, and I was doing flash sites I was doing action script and so I have a background in that I don't have to do that anymore thankfully because I was very bad at it and it took me a really long time but um, it's I come from a standpoint of having to build my own site so when I do design I'm very conscious of in the simplest ways of how this is going to cut up and how this is going to layer and uh, um, that comes with experience. It comes with experience and also just paying attention to that there's, there's a whole part that comes to uh, to doing specifically a web design and you got to be conscious of that. Um, well I think especially too since we're you know we're partners and we've been working together for several years now there's there's naturally been a lot of overlap that's happened you know between you know for, I mean design is always first and foremost and it has been for me I started as a designer I was pretty good okay I guess whatever um, but I think naturally my brain uh, works better with development. Um, at least it comes more naturally to me. And um, but when Lance and I started working together, I'm thinking about design when I'm coding, and he's thinking about coding when he's designing. So just there's a, there's That's a connection the harmony. there that makes things yeah happen you know, easily or easier you know versus like a designer that's just like I'm going to design this however I want and pay a developer to finish it and we talk a lot about functionality and, and like how this how it reads how the information reads to the user and whether or not these groups of informations informations uh, sure uh, make sense um, and that's you know that's what we kind of even did actually the last two days on a little block that has a bunch of information in it and how it relates because you've got all these different you know, bits in there from the title to the little synopsis to the how many comments it had and like who wrote it and but then <laughs> other different things and how it's going to relate to this block up there and then that that obviously changes the way the design goes and also when he thinks about okay now how am I going to how am I going to program this to make this work that his code also looks really clean and is easy for him to navigate. Well, that, that's a s- specifically important with Drupal too and and uh, designing for Drupal is something that started out a little rocky for us but it evolved into some to, to a well-oiled machine really because um, you know we've we've done build projects where the designer clearly has never designed for Drupal or never really cared about what they're they're Maybe designing for the website <laughs> well that too but um, but when some when a designer actually knows like what Drupal is capable of and, and the little quirks that Drupal has and um, how to design something that's not worse by any means but that actually will work with Drupal uh, Drupal structure it makes things so much easier so when we get to do projects I mean we do both design only projects as well as development only projects but when we get to work together as a team it doesn't get any better with that because it's just such a, a tight machine yeah um, and I think uh, I think that definitely designers need to pay more attention to what developers are doing and 
developers need to pay more attention to what designers are doing, and the, the harmony yeah. is uh, is a good thing for everybody, really. Yeah, I, I agree, and actually what I'm seeing in Drupal more now is that developers are giving better tools to designers, so they're not bogged down by having to do a push or a pull on a div. Uh, you know, on their own, when the designer can instead drag and drop or make some minor adjustment and change the CSS uh, name and it, you know, changes up a lot of things. So I, I see there's empowerment from developers to designers, but the funny thing is I see a lot of empowerment coming from designers to the developers in producing the themes that are malleable, you know, uh, it, it works with the color module and, you know, stuff like that because developers just don't do color. They don't do paint, you know, that, it, that's harsh. Um, so, you know, getting into the nitty gritty, what are your tools of choice and where do your responsibilities of those tools kind of end in your workflow, if you don't mind? Lance? Tools of choice. But, so Photoshop, I'm sure, yeah. Illustrator, yeah, does it end there for you in, the, uh, in your Drupal Photoshop, designs? I've been using Color Schemer a lot lately. Um, it's been a lot of fun, kind of like starting with palettes. I, I really I really like color, being a designer, obviously. That's thing. And I end up kind of like changing the palettes a little bit, but that's, I think, it's uh, been an interesting little new change. Um, I use CSS Edit, honestly, because I, I tend to do the, the initial CSS stuff, and then um, uh, our, our other one of our other guys, Jamie, tends to kind of build it out, and I'll go back and kind of uh, tweak things. Um, be anal about it. Um, I think, are there any Drupal modules for you, Lance, that are required in your work or you expect as a designer to be there for you as a tool? I think the only thing, I don't know, it's not a module. It's just when I bitch about the main nav and you, I want you guys to put the class's names on that. <laughs> That's not a module. The answer is no. <laughs> no, honestly, I, 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 I couldn't install a Drupal. I couldn't even do a Drupal install. Sorry, I know. Because he's the smart one, so he does all that stuff. Okay, okay. And I, just, I think the biggest really breakthrough through in the in the workflow um, for us was was when we started doing wireframes first and it's you know a lot more people more people are doing wireframes now but when we started doing wireframes before um, Lance got into design we were able to really think about the functionality of the site in terms of how Drupal uh, works yeah. you know and and iron out those early kinks um, and for the wireframes before he actually you got into design well, I, I actually use InDesign. I've tried a, f a, a few different programs. Um, I, I just I like that uh, the pagination in InDesign is really um, useful. I like that you can print out like high res and stuff. That the, the PDFs are small. Plus the and then I, and then I with your Photoshop. And well, yeah. Well, I don't actually use any of that. I mean, when I'm doing an InDesign, I'm just using whatever you know. It's kind of like usually I pick a font and I pick a box, and then that's about it with gray. Um, so yeah, I've tried a few different ones, and that's the ones that came back. But then I do I do print stuff too, so I'm familiar with that program. It was like something sense. I had learned before. That makes sense. And you, what's your tool set, Scott? Well, for coding, I use uh, I, I'm a big TextMate fan. Yeah. Um, I just think it's it's just such a nice, simple program. I mean, it, um, Git for version control. Uh, I use SQL Pro, which is like a, a GUI for MySQL databases, which is really nice. What else? Terminal. Uh, we big Basecamp guys, actually. Oh, Basecamp so is a really manager. central yeah, part of it, and then, then yeah. we use Campfire and a little, great little program called Propane yeah. that uh, that we have kind of a chat room since we're all virtual in different spots, and we yap on that all day long. Yeah. And then we use uh, iChat, iChat for video, video when it works. Yeah. That makes sense. Something inconsistent. Well, um, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you guys have free massages at the camp. Uh, but is there anything yeah, you like, people? Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, is there anything We're you guys? Providing them. We're actually not doing them, so don't be afraid because oh. I don't even want to be touching. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I have hands of steal, but still, no. Anyways, but they, they have such finesse, Lance. <laughs> you know, that's that's tough to imagine. I just give you a massage with a mouse. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah, a lot of clicking, a lot of clicking. Um, okay, so what would you guys uh, like people to check out uh, when they jump online after hearing this? Uh, check out our site, and uh, maybe follow us on Twitter. We're we're not very adamant about keeping up on it, but we're working on it. We're, 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 <laughs> we're trying, trying to, get to get better. better. We're trying to launch our blog. Uh, we which have has a been blog that's ninety five percent done for two years, <laughs> <laughs> like before, like almost ready to launch. Like yeah, it's pretty pathetic. We're small and busy. Yeah, it's it, but it's fun. So you want them to check out your website, thisbythem.com. Thisbythem.com. By them. All right. And uh, actually, check out a lot of just you know support good websites. How does it? How do you do that? Huh? To go to good website. Go to good websites, people. Whatever that means. <laughs> I was trying to think some sort of shout to the, like, you know, be good to the, be, be nice to your neighbor. Go to our website and be nice to your neighbor. How about that? Peace and love. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.